Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Hi, um, I'm Matt Reidenbach from the Virginia Coast Reserve LTER, and um, today we're out focusing on the restoration and management of seagrass meadows and oyster reefs that we have in our system. Uh, just for um, a brief site news to kind of highlight some of the new funding and collaborations that we have ongoing at the BCR. Uh, we have a new uh, NSF Coastlines and People grant that was funded with the uh, PI of uh, Karen McGlathry, who's the lead of the VCR, um, that's going to focus on building capacity for adaptation in rural coastal communities. Uh, the VCR is also part of, of um, a new NSF Critical Zone Collaborative Network grant um, that is focusing on quantifying the impacts of sea level rise on coastal ecosystems and communities. And so the VCR is one of three sites within that network system. And lastly, we're also a part of um, a Coastal Futures Conservatory, which is a, uh, funded in part by the Mellon Foundation that's really seeking to integrate arts and humanities into the investigation of coastal change. And so they're working with scientists at the VCR to really look at that um, coastal change dynamics. Wonderful. Um, and in terms of the human environment interactions, we're focusing on the uh, managed ecosystems and restoration. And so the VCR is a, um, a coastal lagoon uh, barrier island system that's really um, within a rural region along the eastern shore of Virginia along, along the Atlantic coastline. And it stretches for about 100 kilometers um, along the coast. And you'll notice in this uh, video, kind of the lower energy lagoonal systems that's really buffered by these outer barrier islands that really take the brunt of, of that higher energy wave dynamic storm impacts in the system. And so we're focusing on these ecosystem dynamics within, within this largely kind of natural uh, system. Great. Um, and um, for the first uh, uh, of the two uh, kind of ecosystems that we're gonna be focusing on, we've been doing over the last 20 years working on a large scale restoration effort on seagrasses. And to date we have over 7,000 acres of seagrass restored. So it's been a very highly successful restoration project. But over the last couple of years, the focus has really kind of shifted to looking at seagrass disturbance and recovery, particularly following marine heat waves. And one of the big heat waves that we had uh, most recently ha occurred in 2015. And these are aerial photographs showing the extent of uh, roughly about a five kilometer squared seagrass patch that's behind one of our barrier islands. And you can kind of see the healthy seagrass system um, in 2015, we had a pretty large die-off linked to a marine heat wave at the end of 2015. You're going to see that um, in 2017, two years post disturbance, we still see a large decrease in the seagrass coverage, uh, denoted by where that red over is. We see there's a low seagrass cover, and it really wasn't until about three years later in 2018 that we started to see some um, larger recovery. And this has really spurred a lot of the new research that we're doing in the seagrass system. So I'm looking at disturbance and recovery trajectories for a variety of stressors within the system. And the other um, work that we've been doing in terms of restoration is uh, working in close collaboration with the Nature Conservancy has been a really great partner with our, our, our BCR. And so they've been spending a lot of uh, resources and effort trying to restore oyster reefs. And so um, historically what they've been doing is dredging out old oyster shell from uh, the sea bottom and then depositing it in these intertidal regions. And what the, the goal there is by putting down this oyster shell, they're creating this hard, stable, sub stable substrate to allow for natural oyster reef recru recruitment to occur. Um, and then hopefully the oysters, well, new oyster populations will grow on this hard state trait. And what we've been working with in, in terms of the collaboration with the Nature Conservancy is the scientists at the VCR are really um, looking at um, studying the response of these oyster reefs um, to these conditions. And what we've been finding is that these restored oyster reefs are starting to match and in many cases exceed the function of these natural reefs um, within a decade. And so if you look at these two graphs, what we're looking at is the adult oyster density, as well as the adult oyster length, um, um, compared to uh, natural reefs that have been naturally occurring in the system. And what we found is um, the adult oyster densities on these restored reefs have been increasing and it starts to match what uh, the densities are at these natural reef systems after about a six to seven year period and actually um, uh, surpass the natural reef systems. And it's similar with the adult oyster lengths, only after about a three year period are the average adult oyster lengths on the restored sites, um, does it take for them to match the natural reefs? And we've actually seen a, similarly at a stabling off but exceedance of the lengths of the oysters on these restoration sites compared to these natural reefs reef system. So it's been, uh, in many ways, a very successful uh, restoration project that um, is using some of this long-term data that we have um, with the Nature Conservancy. 
And where are we going with this? Well, we're trying to incorporate both oyster restoration and using novel oyster reef construction techniques, including this um, what's called oyster catcher reef substrate, um, as well as um, uh, more traditional oyster castles that we're putting along this um, eroding marsh edge that's uh, lining this small coastal community of Watch Creek, Virginia. So this community has about 300 members in it. And this marsh um, is one of the last lines of defense from coastal storms that are really impacting the harbor in the, the town, uh, the town, the local town. And so we're, we're building um, these reef sections along this area to do really two things through a nature-based solutions to increase oyster populations, but also to enhance habitat for the salt marsh to hopefully uh, deposit more sediment and allow at a minimum prevent uh, more erosion of this marsh, but hopefully to um, gain aerial extent of this marsh for future uh, coastal protection. Uh, so that's it. Thank you very much.